it's me again Ray G4 and SJ with video <laughs> video number five can you believe it I was jokingly saying the other day that oh there'll be six seven eight nine ten I think there will be I have made fantastic progress good news good results what I'm going to do first now bear in mind at the moment the only coil pack I've got is 460 kilohertz to 980 kilohertz so it covers the medium wave or half the medium wave band am band you call it in america don't you so here i am having a tune around last night now bear in mind this was eight o'clock it was still daylight the you know the ionosphere the d layer which disappears at night and allows medium wave signals to go through and then reflect it off the is it e or f or something so the d layer was still absorbing signals to an extent Later in the evening, I tuned in around 11 o'clock, medium wave, absolutely packed, jam-packed stuff all over the place. But uh, anyway, have a look at this. This is where I'm just tuning from 460 to 980. Bear in mind, as I say, it wasn't dark, not completely dark. Um, and also I had the RF gain turned down because there's so much stuff. I just wanted to get the stronger stations. I did count. I looked up online somewhere, medium wave stations. I found that what this coil pack covered, there are 12 Spanish stations. The other night I was listening and there's football commentary going on. Every twist of the dial, another Spanish football station. So all good fun. Look what's just turned up in the post. How about that? 3.5 to 7.3 megs. Can anyone tell me this? Anyone in the know? It wouldn't fit. One end wouldn't go in. It's because, see these holes? There are spigots sticking out in there. That one didn't have a hole. That's the aerial one, I think. I had to drill a hole. Why is that? Does anyone know why that didn't have a hole in it? So it wouldn't fit. Are there different coil packs is a bit bashed about are there different coil packs for different models of receiver i don't know i've not come across any of these before so only ever having the one coil pack i don't know whether there is a difference sorry about that background noise there i've had a tune round 3.5 to 7.3 megs all a bit dead but it is i've just tuned around on the icom 7300 it's dead there's nothing there during the day I'll have a go on that one tonight. So that's uh, that's good that that's arrived. I don't know whether you've seen the other four videos. Hopefully you have. Um, one of the problems was no AGC. I did, well, very little AGC. It was all up the wall. This is the trouble. There we are. That's what the trouble was. See, there's four resistors. They go from the AGC rail to the control grids of the valves. 
to uh, give the valves the, the negative voltage from the AGC rail. Three of them were very high and one was completely open circuit. They're 470k by the way, so replaced all those with decent resistors. The crystal filter didn't work. Now the crystal, which just unplugs here, is in there. This was rattling. So I took the top off and a couple of screws, took the top off and the crystal itself inside between two like brass plates, it was just wobbling about in there. So with a bit of uh, adjustment, I won't say bending, which is what it was, a bit of adjustment, I've got the plates against the crystal. The crystal actually is uh, almost a quarter of an inch thick. The reason for, just in case you're wondering why it's that thick, uh, the reason is the thinner the sort of wafer of quartz, the higher the frequency it will vibrate at, and the lower the frequency, the thicker it is that needs to be. So it looks like an ice block <laughs> in there, 465 kilohertz. What I'm going to do at some stage, when I get a minute, is put the crystal on my Nano VNA and just check the exact uh, frequency that it's resonating at. So that's another job to do later. But now the crystal filter is working. So that's another job sorted out. What's next? The S meter. I've still got problems with that. It reads, but on, on an S9 plus signal, for example, BBC Radio 5 Live from Southwick, what's that, six miles away, two kilowatts, up a mast just there. It's end stop here, you know, it's S9. On here, it's S3, if you're lucky, with the RF gain flat out. You can just about see, there's a hole there where the noise limiter control should go. Now, there's nothing in that hole and someone scratched aerial trimmer there. I've worked out what's going on here. This here below the, you can see that, below the S meter on the right, that is the limiter control and it looks original. This is the problem I'm up against. This isn't a bodge that someone's done in their shed or workshop somewhere. That is original. You can see by the wiring, uh, that's a bodge. That's a three-way rotary switch. I don't know what that's for yet. I haven't worked that out. Um, there's a headphone socket there, which on most of these receivers is there. And it's there. And there's an empty hole there where the limiter pot should be. Now, here's an interesting thing, just in case you're getting bored. What year is this? People have said uh, it's 1930s. I thought it was 40s. I've been reading up about National HRO and they manufactured these well into the 50s and I read somewhere early 60s. Now here's a, f a clue. Metal valves, they changed from glass to metal valves at some stage I think in the 40s. These valves don't have top caps. The control grids are on the pins underneath. So there's no top caps here. So is that a later modification or something or other. Here's a little clue. This is a, it's a bit blurred. Sorry, it's a bit blurred. There's a capacitor I replaced. Jan 58. There we are, January 1958. And it looks like an original component. I checked it before I took it out. That hasn't been added by someone. You haven't had one replaced there. It is an original component. I mean, I'm 99.9% .9 sure of that. Does that mean this receiver was assembled in 1958 when the capacitor was made or later? Could have been 59, 60. I really don't know. I don't know whether I mentioned in the last video the little audio output transformer that someone had bodged in, I took out. I got it going with that, but there was distortion. It didn't match the, the valve impedance, you know, the primary of the thing didn't match. So I luckily I had a brand new radio spares transformer, there it is, um, which has got impedance taps on the primary and the secondary. So I've now got the best match I can with that and the distortion has gone. So that's something else that I've put right. There's still a lot to do. As I say, the S meter isn't working properly. The S meter zeroing pot, which is there above the triode audio output valve, now the triode audio output valve is original. I know most of these had a 6V6 in them. That is original, a B36. I found, was it an HRO 
R106 that used a triode. I think it was the 106. So there are these receivers around with a triode audio output valve, and this is one of them. I cannot find anywhere a manual or the circuit diagram of the way this is wired with these valves. I can't find one anywhere. But even without that, even without the circuit, oh, the thing is, the R106 circuit has, uh, now was it that one with the crystal filter? I think that has variable capacity. Yeah, that's the one with the variable um, capacitor, which is the variable selectivity. Most of these have a switch, a six-way switch for selectivity. The R106 uses a variable capacitor, as this does. And there are various other parts of the circuit that, that seem to suit various models. It's as if the National HRO Company had taken a bit from the R106 and built that there, a bit from the 5TA1 and built that bit there. It seems to be a mixture of all the different models, which has made it very confusing. Hence all these videos and me rambling on about what I've done and what I haven't sorted out and what I've yet to sort out. More good news. Thank you, Mike, for dropping around another coil pack. Uh, what is it? Nine, 900 KC, sorry, kilohertz, KC, 900 kilohertz to 2050, uh, 2.05 megs. So basically one meg to two megs, which finished, you know, gives me the rest of the medium wave uh, AM band. That is, that's, what's that? That's Leica radio on 1458, which is good. I've got LBC 1152 which is, uh, where are we? 1250. There. That's LBC. So I've now got three coil packs. I can cover the whole of the medium wave band. Um, and the other one I've got, was it 3.5 to 7.3 megs? So that's good. There are, there's a strange problem with this, which I'll show you in a minute. I did a recording with the phone, a little video. It's rather odd. Uh, we'll have a look at that now. I just want to show you this. This is LBC on 1152. So we are going to march into clean water. I've put together a little Okay. If I tune in the last seven here. You hear that cut off? I'm going down in frequency. There's 11.52. Cuts off. And it's all become microphonic. If I go a bit further. It's working again, but look. something very strange with the mixer valve there. So in this receiver, there's a, what is it, a 12SA7 mixer. There's a separate oscillator valve uh, and the mixer is a pentagrid, a heptode. It's got five grids, separate oscillator. So you've got the oscillator coming into the heptode. You've got the RF signal, then the IF going out. That's that glass one that I put my finger near. I'm not sure, I've replaced decoupling and all that, so I'm sure it's not doing something weird because of the, uh, like a coupling or decoupling capacitor. It seems to be sort of taking off. Parasitics or something, it's, it's a parasite. That's what it is. Um, I've ordered a 12SA7. I think, that, yeah, it is a 12SA7, isn't it? In fact, if I pull it out, I can have a look. 12SA7. Pentagrid, five grids. Um, some places, if you look it up, it says it's a, a self oscillating mixer. Well, this isn't, well, it is, it's oscillating when it shouldn't, because um, I've got a separate oscillator. So I'm pretty certain it's the valve itself. It only does it on this coil pack. On the other coil packs, it's fine. So I can't, I don't quite know what's going on. 
unless there's something weird with a coil pack, but I mean it's working. It's just that certain frequencies, uh, it starts, well the, it cuts off as you saw, and the valve seems to start oscillating or doing something funny. I'm hoping it's just the valve itself. I also ordered um, a double diode for the noise limiter because that went funny. I tapped it, the original one, I haven't put it in yet, and it did all sorts of weird things. So I thought, right, we'll have a double diode in there, a new one in there. I'm not worried about the noise, uh, you know, the limiter at the moment. I'm just trying to sort out these other problems. Here's the thing, I can't find on any HRO circuit a mixer like that with a heptode as the mixer. It's just not there on any of the, the circuits. So where's that one come from? Again, it's all original underneath. It's all original wiring. You know, you can, well, unless a, a really highly professional chap, radio ham, amateur, has changed all this. If he has, then uh, he's done a damn good job because it really does look original. And as for that capacitor I showed you, which I've now thrown away, I'm 100% certain that is original. There's a photo of inside one of the uh, coil units on a coil pack. Just I just took it out and have a look because uh, I, what I want to do is check each one, make sure that the, the variable capacitor in there moves properly, give it a little drop of oil or something just to make sure everything's all right. Only a very little drop on the shaft, you know. If you want to take one of these out, as I've just done, I undid one of these screws, started to undo the other one, and there's a plate inside that was, start, was loose. And I thought, hang on a minute, how do I get that plate back in? I didn't want to go and, you know, take the thing out that I can't get it back. Anyway, what you do, it's dead easy, I'd look online. If you want to remove that one, loosen those two screws, loosen those two, and it will slide out the whole thing. And then you undo the three to get the aluminium can off it. So just loosen those and it will slide out. I didn't want to go, I didn't want to go taking it to bits and then things drop off inside and I can't get back on. So what I will do eventually is take each coil pack, each unit out and clean it up, check it all over, and that should do the trick. I hope you're finding all these videos useful. <clears throat> it's certainly a learning curve for me. One thing I did, I checked the crystal on my Nano VNA to see you know, where the thing is resonant, and it was, what was it, I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, the IF's 465, now a lot of the radios are 456. This is 465, which is another, I mean, does someone tuned it I don't know anyway the crystal is what was it it was 460.5 and the IF is 465 so it was 460 so it's a bit off I did read that uh, you know when you plug the crystal back in of course it is pulled and there's a capacitor in there so uh, I don't know exactly I'm not again I'm not too bothered about that the crystal filter all works as it should as far as I can tell so, okay, I shall leave it there. I'm making a list of all the stations I've been receiving on medium wave. It seems to be very sensitive. I haven't a adjusted any IF alignment yet. I'm leaving alignment till very last. I don't want to do all the alignment and then go and change bits and pieces and it mucks it up. Okay, well on that note, with a bit of Morse code from a two meter repeater in the background, I shall see you next time. As I say, I hope you find the videos useful. Thanks for watching as always. See you next time. Bye bye for now.